His fiery chant honored the holiness of Emperor Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. Bob Marley, the third world's first international superstar, spread the music of reggae throughout the world, and with it, the revelations of his mystical Rastafarian faith. songs were all parables, messages of faith and warning. Men and people will fight you down when you see your light. Let me tell you if you're not wrong, where everything is all right. So we gonna walk through the roads of creation. Bob's cry of Exodus was a siren anthem to all the world's downpressed to leave the wickedness of Babylon and make the march back to the Holy Land of Ethiopia. I think uh, Bob Marley's message uh, is toward universal peace, which I think is very good. It's so positive. It's about the most positive spiritual force on this planet, as far as I can say. It's bringing a lot of people together, keeping us together, which is what we need right now. As Bob finished off a blistering set, he carried a secret he chose not to share with the world. Bob Marley had cancer. The fiery tough gong, who as a kid conquered the slums of West Kingston and led the whalers to worldwide glory, was now almost 35. Said to be gifted at prophecy since childhood, Bob predicted he would die at 36. Now listen to Bob's prophecies and messages, recorded in America in 1979 and stored in a vault until now. Question, Mr. Marley. Um, in November 1930, almost 49 years ago to the day, uh, Rastafari was crowned King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of sure. Judah. Uh, Haile Selassie, King, King of Ethiopia. In 1955, 25 years later, the emperor set aside 500 acres of land for black peoples of the West who wished to return to the motherland. Uh, now my question is, uh, what importance should these facts have for black people of the world? What important facts are these things that black people in the world? First fact is that the are plan in Africa, right? Next fact is that Christ. No, the whole thing is when Christ, Christ then will return as King of Kings, the last of the land, the land of Judah. 
I and I see His Majesty as the Christ of the Bible Tower. Bob always performed with a banner of the Emperor behind him. Before Selassie was crowned Emperor, he was called Ras, or Prince, Tafari, hence the name of the Rastafarian faith. The Rastafari movement starts at the same time when you see His Majesty crowned. King of Kings, the name Rastafari. Yes. And then the Bible will be the whole thing get together. Yes. So that is where the Rastafari movement The Father's Land was Ethiopia, ruled by Selassie in an unbroken line of kings that stretched back 3,000 years to the time of Solomon and Sheba. Foundations of Rastafarianism were established in the teachings of Marcus Garvey, the Jamaican firebrand who started the influential Back to Africa movement in the early 1900s. In Psalm 68, Garvey found a sign. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Yeah, Marcus Garvey. So you must look to the king, look for a king in the east. Black king. 1930, His Majesty Crown, and then I cite him because that's when Marcus Garvey had a deal with Africa. So you know, it's just the truth, you know. This is the only the, the wrong thing about it is that um, Christ, he come from Africa, and him always born July. You know, Christ is always a, a lion, lion. Uh, Everyone who sits on the throne of King David, have a dear lion, Judah. July was the sign of Judah, the lion. Rastafarians believe Christ was born in July, as was Selassie, the lion of all lions. Africa, you are my Fight it, you know. Rome, this fight it too, if you have to set up Rome. So Rome become a symbol in everyone's imagination, in a sense, instead of Ethiopia. In Addis Ababa, which part the reality, not the, not the, not the falla, the real thing come from before men get idea, so things like this could happen. You know, that's where the really could root idea.